in what I'm saying, not for the sake of it, not, not, not for the sake of it, but more as a polemic, because I genuinely feel that the reason those young people called their school strikes is because they think this place is sleepwalking off of a cliff edge, not in terms of Brexit, although we may well be doing that, but actually ecologically. And as a result, I, I want, I'm happy for members on the benches opposite to challenge me at any point in the time I have whilst I'm speaking as a result. Um, I'm speaking from the back benches, but I was made the first ever Shadow Minister for Sustainable Economics, appointed by the Shadow Chancellor, because the next Labour government understands that uh, we can no longer allow the Treasury and its short-termism and its obsession with neoclassical economic orthodoxy to block the bold and radical fiscal, monetary and regulatory changes that we need to deal with the climate crisis. We on this side of the House understand the scale of the challenge before us and the national and international purpose we must set ourselves to. So it can be nothing less than a radical transformation of the way our economy works. And that's a problem for some people if you are tied to an economic system, as the Conservative Party is. That's what it is. It's the Conservative Party. It wants to keep the economic model that we have. But there are some of us on this side of the House who understand that if you want to radically make those changes in the time frames that we're talking, then you need to radically change how the economy works and who the economy works for. And I believe that will be a challenge to some of the members opposite. Um, I'll tell you why. We know that in this country, domestically and internationally, the, poor, the wealthiest 10% are responsible for more than half of all the greenhouse gas emissions that take place on our planet and in our country. And yet we know the poorest 50% are responsible for just 10% of greenhouse gas emissions. This isn't the false choice of consumption for the poorest versus the environment. Yeah. This is what you will find is that because the poor cannot cut what they're not consuming. Yeah. So what we need to see is a contraction and a convergence. The poorest in this world, the poorest in this country will need to consume more, but the wealthiest will need to do more of their fair share. That's not just individuals, but corporations as well. And that's a challenge to an economic orthodoxy that the bench is opposite champion. So that is the challenge before us. And we can see what happens when we don't ensure that social justice is at the heart of the changes that we make. You look at the Gilets jaunes movement in France. It happened because of technocratic centrist fixes that the Macron government was trying to make, 40 billion pounds of carbon taxes, and yet only a small fraction invested in public transport in the poorest. It fell disproportionately on those least able to pay and actually those consuming the least carbon. And as a result, not one single tax on French aviation fuel. That was what caused the frustration and the anger in France, inequality and a lack of justice at the heart of that economic policy. And this is why the Green New Deal, as mentioned by, by the Honourable Member from Brighton Pavilion, is capturing the public imagination, because there doesn't need to be a trade-off between the environment and jobs, between economic and social justice and the environment. So how did we respond here to climate change and the sustainability issues that are facing us in the UK? We decided to expand Heathrow. Fantastic. Uh, I think he, the Heathrow, I think the Heathrow uh, issue was probably one of the most decisive splits we'll see uh, in politics in coming years. It's the biggest single source of emissions in the UK, and the expansion has now given the green light to 300 million tonnes more of carbon uh, being poured into our atmosphere. No government that aspires to tackle the climate crisis and keep temperatures below 1.5 degrees centigrade would ever allow Heathrow to happen. But let's also run through very quickly some of the failings of this government. They slashed soda subsidies, blocked onshore wind, prevented the closed loop reuse and recycling sector. They supported fracking, privatised the Green Investment Bank, supported Heathrow expansion, blocked mandatory uh, climate risk related reporting for the finance sector, uh, never issued a green bond and have axed their own flagship energy efficiency policy. Those young people weren't just calling for incremental change. They were calling not for climate change, but for system change. Yeah. Yeah.